welcome to Artistic Adventures. We're continuing the Japanese doll project, and this video will be about making the wig and kanzashi, which are the hair decorations. This is a picture of a traditional geisha, and you can see some of the hair decorations that she's used in, in uh, her sort of elaborate hairdo. And this was another one I found a picture of. So I'm just going to make some modifications. Like I said, this doll is not completely traditional. Now this is the Barbie, it's the Make It Move Barbie that I'm using for this uh, doll. And she actually has um, Asian features, but I'm going to just completely start her from scratch. As you know, I've already done the face up. Now I had to get rid of this hair. The hair, oh my gosh, this, oh. And I did something, I know it's probably like against doll rules or something, but I did cut her head open to get this hair and the glue out. This was like the worst glue. Oh my gosh. And it got, it for some reason it leaked into the hair. The hair was all sticky and waxy. And it just, it took a real effort to get all that out. But I did. And I just glued the top of the head back on. There was just no way I was going to get all that out through the neck. Now the hair I'm using is this black alpaca hair. This is uh, a pa alpaca locks, so this has been somewhat processed uh, to pull out the locks. It's not completely the raw where you have to separate the locks out. So now I'm just combing it out with a, a pet groomer brush. And then after I get the little locks that uh, I've chosen already combed, then I sort of lay them out and prepare them for me to put on the wig cap. So um, this is the wig cap, and uh, if you need to know how to do that, I do have a video on making wig caps that you can watch. Now I'm just putting black Sharpie marker around the edge of this because I'm going to flip her hair up and uh, make an updo. So where I flip it up, I don't want the white edge of this cap showing through. So I'm just going to mark it so that if any part of it does show through, it, it will look black and it won't be so you know stand out so much all right so I'm just going to start on the inside of the cap I'm putting a little bit of glue not right at the edge a little back from the edge maybe an eighth of an inch inch back from the edge because I don't want the glue to show at the uh, edge when I flip it up so I just put the hair in there and then press it with my thumb or fing forefinger up towards the crown of the wig. I don't pull it down, I just press it up to make sure that the glue is stuck. So I'm going to do this all the way around because she's her hair will be pulled up in a sort of a modified bun on top of her head and this so her hair will be flipped up all the way around, not not just at the front. So basically just following that same procedure and making sure I'm really careful not to get the glue too close to the edge of the wig cap so that it'll show when I flip it up. This is sort of difficult because you're having to reach inside and you know the hair tends to get stuck <laughs> to your fingers when you're doing that but um, it really has a nice effect when you when you finish so that you can turn it up and it looks really natural like a you know, like it's really her hair, and you don't see the edge of the wig when you flip it up. So once you've done that, I sort of go back and look at it and just see if there were any little places that I needed to fill in that uh, left the space, but it looks pretty good. And so that's how it looks after you've finished. And yeah, she's starting to look more normal with hair. <laughs> So now I'm going to start putting rows of hair around, starting at the out, outer edge and working inward. And this first row is important because you, you don't, once again, you don't want to get the glue too close to the edge. You want to make sure the glue is back from the edge just a little bit so that it won't show or it won't transfer when you're pressing it down into the hair that you're going to flip up. Because once you do that, then it's going to show when you turn it, and then it just it won't look natural. So this part, you have to be pretty careful. I know it looks like it's going fast in this video, but really, I was really trying to take my time and, and work very slowly. And once again, as I press my finger, 
on the hair to glue it down, I'm pressing it upward towards the crown, not not down, not back and forth, just pressing it up. And that makes the glue attach to all the little fibers in the hair on the bottom and then all the way to the top. And I like this glue because um, it's waterproof. It's pretty strong. It dries really fast, much faster than a, the white glue. And then what I usually do after I finish a wig is to give it a shampoo. And I'm, I'm going to do that for her too. Because all this, this is pretty clean alpaca hair. It still has a little bit of dirt and uh, oil from the animal in it. I think the place where I buy it is called Alpaca Meadows. And they have really nice, really nice alpaca fur. And that's usually where I get all my hair, doll hair from. But uh, still, I, you know, it's just hard to get it completely clean at this point anyway. You can buy uh, raw alpaca hair there, the fiber, and it's cheaper. For instance, that amount that I showed you in the beginning, that's two ounces. And if I remember correctly, it was around $26 for the two ounces. So it would have been about you know, 13, 12 or 13 for one ounce. And a lot of places sell it you know, for one ounce at a time. But if you bought an ounce or so, in the raw, it would have been about maybe $8, 8 or $10, depending on how long it is. Now, keep in mind, out of that big, huge uh, two-ounce amount that you saw in the beginning, I used very little of that. I don't even know if I used a fourth of it. So even though I spent $26 on, on two ounces, that's going to be enough to do quite a few dolls, depending on uh, how much you know hair they need and the, and the hairstyle that you're going to use. So... I personally think the locks is a better way to go, but everybody's different, and that's what makes the world a nice place. So anyway, we've pretty much finished, and we're going to let that dry, and I'll let you see, now that it's uh, pretty much dry, how the effect is going to be when we flip it up. You see, it's going to look like a nice edge there, and we'll be able to put our hair up in a bun. But I am going to shampoo it and comb it out a little bit more. And while that's drying, we're going to make some of the kanzashi. And these are the hair ornaments. First of all, I flipped the aluminum foil and glued several layers together, and I'm going to let that dry. Now I'm using these toothpicks that have a nice carved design on the end. And I'm going to cut three of those the length of what might be the, the length of chopsticks for this doll, um, cutting off, you know, uh, maybe a third of it. And then I'm going to take the toothpicks and use an X-Acto knife to, car to carve them down to a point on, on the end. Not the end with the design, but the other end. And then I'm just using a nail file to file it. I want these to be really smooth. So when we stick them in the doll's hair, they won't snag on the fibers of the hair and mess up the hairstyle. I want that to look really smooth. Okay, so we've got our three... Oh, they almost look like spikes for a vampire slayer. Hmm, maybe I'll do that doll next. A Buffy doll. <laughs> anyway, we're going to take these. I'm putting some mica powder on one, some silvery glitter powder so it looks like silver because I'm going to... Uh, use that one for the silver decorations that I'm making out of the aluminum foil. And the others I'm painting red with just regular acrylic paint. And then we'll let those dry and we're going to put a coating of acrylic varnish on them. This is a high gloss acrylic varnish just so they'll have a glossy finish and also to help make them really smooth. And once I get that done and let them drain a little bit, they'll dry pretty quickly, and then we'll complete the decorations. While that's drying, I'm going to take the aluminum foil that I folded over four or five times and glued together and cut some little pieces off. And these are going to look like, uh, in the beginning, I don't know if you noticed, the, there's one hair design that has little metal strips hanging from it. And those were made so that when the geisha walked, they sort of tinkled and made a pretty sound and it added to her allure. So now these won't make a sound because they're aluminum foil, but <laughs> they'll 
somewhat resemble it. Now I've just taken one of those pieces, folded it in the middle, put some glue in the center, and then put a piece of thread, just regular sewing thread, in there. And I'm going to do the same thing. I think I have five, five pieces that I'm going to make. And what we'll do then is, it, is attach these threads to the to the hair ornament so that they hang down and sort of dangle like the little chimes that they're supposed to be. All right, so now we'll let those the glue on those dry after we finish them. And we'll start working on the other two pieces. So for the ends, I'm using little silver and gold balls. I have a nice silver bead um, that has some ridges in it. You can't really see it very well in this picture, but I'm going to glue that to the end of the silver stick and I'm keeping the holes on the sides because we're going to thread thread through that. So just put a little dab of glue and set that aside to dry. And then for the red sticks, we're going to put gold balls. And on one of those, I will have the hole to the side and the other one I will have the hole facing up and down because I'm going to stick something on the top of, of that one in addition to the ball. All right, and so I'll let those dry a little bit. Now I'm going to trim those silver pieces down a little bit so they're a little bit narrower and look a little bit more like what they're supposed to be. <laughs> they were a little bit wide, too wide. All right, and then I'm going to use a beading needle. These are made so that you can stick them through really thin holes. But I like it because it has a really wide eye, and I'm going to put these five pieces of thread together through the eye at one time, and then I'll be able to thread it through the bead on the top of the silver stick very easily. All right, so there we have that. And then I put a little bit blob of glue on top of the silver bead where the thread comes out, and that will hold it in place, and I'll be able to trim the thread off after that dries. Put a little bit more glue around the bead too to make sure it's secure. All right, so we'll set that aside to dry. That's her little dangling charms or chimes, I guess. And now I'm taking this bronze colored filigree looking finding and I'm going to cut half of it off with my wire cutters, leaving one piece coming straight down that I'm going to glue into the top of the bead. So put a little glue on the end of that and then stick it into the bead. Then we'll take the other end of the bead and glue it to the red stick. And this will make sort of a decorative topping to this particular hair ornament. Okay, then we're going to let that dry. I have another thing to do to that, but it needs to be dried first. So for the other red stick, I'm going to use little gold beads dangling from it. And once again, I'm using my, my bead needle and some thread, just regular thread, and threading these little tiny, tiny gold beads that, yes, they will fly off and go all over the room, and you will lose them, so be careful. And I'm glued, I've glued the bottom knot that I tied and then threaded the beads onto there. Then I threaded it through the, the hole and the bead on the red stick, and I'm going to put another little tiny gold bead on top and glue it and that will hold that there so I can trim the thread off. So put a glob of glue, pull that bead down on top of it and then we can trim the thread off. I have one final thing to do to the other red stick. I had this little tiny bead that came off of something. I don't even know what it came off of, but I want to use it. It's, it's kind of cute. And uh, I'm going to put it on a piece of thread and then dangle it from that uh, other red stick that has the ornament on it. And I'll just tie it between the bead and the ornament and glue it, and then it'll, it should be secure. Put a little piece of glue on the thread, the knot at on the bead so that it, I can clip that thread off. and It'll just dangle. It's really cute. It's sort of a crystal blue look. I don't know what it came off of, but I like to make use of everything. I have all these rare, you know, these uh, odd items hanging around, and I always look at them and see how I can use them. 
All right, so we're going to tie that on there and glue that and then trim it. And we have our three ornaments, the one with the dangling bead, the one with the gold beads, and our silver one with the little chimes. And now it's time to complete the hairdo. So my doll's hair is dried and it's so pretty, silky soft. I almost want to leave it down, it's so beautiful. But I'm kind of committed to making this doll look halfway, maybe maybe fourth of a way geisha. <laughs> Not even halfway, really. Just sort of like if she was trying to be somewhat traditional and wear a kimono. All right, so we're going to just stick those uh, pins into the hair for decoration. I did use some very short bob pins to help hold her hair in place, too. And I added a little flower for effect because they did tend to wear flowers in their hair, and it looks pretty. All right, there's our ornaments from one side, and there's the silver ornaments from the other side and how the hair looks from the back and again from the front. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give me some thumbs up. This was pretty long, but it was pretty complicated too. We still have some more to do to this doll. I've got to figure out what we're going to do for, for shoes. I'd love to do sandals, but she don't have any toes, so that's going to be interesting. Anyway, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss a thing. We'll finish up this doll in the next video. Thanks, and bye.